Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in the last video we talked about binary relations and in this video I'm going to talk about making compound relations out of the binary relations we just talked about. Now sometimes it makes sense to talk about two different relations and what a union or intersection or cooperation of those relations is. So the first way to make a compound relation deals with union and intersection. So let's say that s rho t is the relation that s is a sister of t, and s sigma t is the relation that s is a brother of t. Then s rho or sigma t would be the relation s is a sibling of t, right? This means that either rho or sigma is satisfied by s and t. Now the way that we can kind of define these is that I would write s rho union t or sorry, rho union sigma of t. And this is the one we just talked about here. This is where either rho or sigma is satisfied by s and t. Now this is equivalent to me writing the ordered pair st is an element of the set rho union sigma, right? Using our um, sets of ordered pairs to define these relations. Or equivalently, I can write S and T satisfy um, this rho uh, union sigma if S rho T or S sigma T or both. Right? With union, we know that we don't care if it's in both, we just need it to be one or the other. Now we also have an intersection T. This would be if we had these two relations, rho and sigma, and we want to look at the st that satisfy both relations at the same time. right? So this is going to be equivalent to saying that the ordered pair st is an element of the intersection of the sets rho and sigma. And this is equivalent to the idea s rho t and s sigma t. Okay, so this is one way that we can compound relations and we'll give some examples of, of these um, in our examples video. But I want to talk about another way to compound relations first and that is by relation composition. So we say that if r, s, and t are sets and rho is a relation, oh, just relation, from r to t, and sigma is a relation from t to s, then sigma composed with rho is a relation from r to s, assuming it is defined. Now the way that we would define this in terms of a set, I'd say sigma composed with rho, that's equal to all of the ordered pairs r, s, such that r rho t, and for that same t, t sigma uh, s, where s is in s, t is in t, and r is in r. So while the composition is defined as these ordered pairs r s, what's actually happening is we're going from r to t with the relationship rho, and then from that same t, we're using that to, um, to go through sigma to s, and that's connecting this r and s by this composition of relations. Now again, we'll have some examples of this in our examples video, um, but one important um, property of composition is that composition is associative. Right? Um, that is, um, let's say I have these th three relations, alpha, well, this is if, alpha, beta, and gamma. So if alpha, beta, and gamma are relations, then alpha composed with the relation beta composed with gamma is equal to the relation alpha composed with beta and that whole relation composed with gamma. Now this is of course assuming that one of these compositions exists but if one of these compositions exists, then they both exist, and they are the same relation. So all this to say that 
when we're doing this composition and we have this string of compositions, it doesn't really matter the order in which we compose these relations together. The relation that we get at the end, which in the end will be one binary relation, is going to be the same no matter what order we choose to compose. Okay? And again, I'll give some examples of this in our worked examples video in this section. Um, but this is how we would create different kinds of compound relations from our binary relations. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about inverse relations. We'll see you there.